Hi, welcome to the last video in our series about natural resources. On this one, we're going to be talking about why is it that they are not everywhere on the earth and that they are distributed unevenly throughout the planet. So the uh, main reason for this is because geology is different in different places. And that's why you're not going to find the same things everywhere. Uh, so as an example, uh, rocks and minerals in uh, each region of the planet has a unique geological history. And that leads to the formation of minerals and chemicals and gathering of rocks that are different in different places. And so you can't mine diamonds everywhere. You can't mine gold everywhere. You can't mine silver everywhere. And that's going to cause uh, the necessity uh, to have commerce so that different countries can exchange those resources between them. Because not every, everywhere that you go, you're going to have everything. Uh, the U.S. is pretty big. And because it's pretty big, it's got a lot of stuff. But even us don't have everything because uh, there are things which are only found in certain places on the planet. Uh, oil is only found in places that used to be ecosystems that had shallow seas millions of years ago. And so uh, that means it's only going to be found in places that used to be, uh, through the geological history, submerged at some point with a shallow sea full of algae and life. And that's the case in exactly where the Arabian Peninsula is. There's a lot of it in off the coast of Brazil, a lot of it off the coast of Venezuela. There's a bunch in Alaska. So there's still large deposits of oil all throughout the world, Siberia. They're still being uh, picked up. But we think that there's not enough left to last another century or two. So it's going to run out here sometime pretty soon. Coal, however, oh, my gosh, there's so much coal on the planet. Uh, it's almost everywhere. Uh, you can find it uh, in so many places uh, in a lot of amounts. Uh, and it basically comes from places that used to be covered with swamps. But most of the earth was covered with swamps uh, during the Carboniferous period a long, long, long time ago. And so there's a lot of coal to go around. And it's still going to be for a very long time, even though we're shifting away from using it because of the stigma about it being dirty, even though there are ways to burn it cleanly uh, by, by filtering the actual emissions. Uh, the coal itself can't be cleaned and refined too much. It can to some extent, but the technology is more on the filtration process. And I visited a power plant with students uh, a couple of years ago, and I was impressed to learn all the different things that they do to make sure that what comes out of the exhausts is very, very, very clean, comparatively speaking. But you do still have carbon emissions, right? So that's why we're shifting away from it. But again, uh, there'll be questions in the test about this. Swamps, except that a lot of the earth was covered with swamps, so there's a lot of coal in a lot of places. All right, we have soil next, which is a, that's a renewable resource. But even that is not everywhere. And the soil richness is different in different places. So if you look, for example, at the Sahara Desert, it's incredibly rich, even though it doesn't have any water. That's because it used to be a sea a long, long time ago, which is why there's oil in that area of the deserts uh, in Africa. Um, but it, it used to be a sea, and because it used to be a sea, it's covered with the remains. The sand is full of the remains of shellfish and diatoms, which are full of nutrients. Now, uh, that gets blown away by the wind and covered and seeds uh, nutrients all over the earth, which is kind of cool. Uh, but different places have different soil richness, right? So it takes a while, though, for the soil to form through the erosion, deposition, and biological process of nutrient cycling. So in some places, don't have the kind of environments to facilitate decomposition or erosion or deposition, and that causes it to be hard for the soil to renew itself fast enough. And, and so uh, think about it. When we do agriculture, and we plant, the plants grow, and the nutrients stay in it. And then they get shipped out and sold somewhere else for somebody to eat it. And so the nutrients go with the plants away from the soil. And so that's the danger. As we do more and more agriculture, that we deplete the richness of the soil. And then we have to put fertilizer to, re to replenish it. But it's also not easy to make fertilizer because phosphates and nitrates and nitrites have to be mined from places that are rich in, in those things. And those places probably have people wanting to use it. Right. So it's complicated. Uh, so we have to uh, the best thing to do is rotate crops to make sure that, that we don't use the same kinds of nutrients and allow the soil uh, to return. And there's crops that actually return uh, nutrients to the, to the soil that other types of crops will use. And if you rotate them, uh, you allow the soil to stay uh, fertile for longer. Uh, there's also sunlight, which is an inexhaustible resource, but it's included here because it is unevenly distributed. So the earth has a tilt, right? So then uh, if the sunlight is hitting the earth at a different angle at different times of the year, because because the earth is tilted, as it goes around the sun, different parts of it get sunlight. So let's say 
my hand here represents the northern hemisphere, right? So, right, if the sun is over, uh, over here, right, and right now the northern hemisphere is tilted towards it, and so it will be summer. But then later on in the year, it will go around it, and it will be tilted away from it, and then that will be winter. Now, the regions in the middle of the planet tend to get more of the sunlight throughout of the year, and therefore they'll be hotter. While the regions near the edges of the planet only get more sunlight when the tilt is towards it. So, for, in fact, for six months of the year, the actual North Pole itself doesn't get any sunlight. It's darkness. And, light, and by then, as a trade-off, it gets six months of pure light. And so uh, the abundance and the time at which it gets changes, which can have an effect on the productivity of ecosystems. Um, and that's why tropical ecosystems are more productive because they have a more uh, constant amount of sunlight uh, throughout the year, uh, relatively speaking. Do remember, by the way, that when it's summer down here or up here in the, in, in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be uh, winter on the southern hemisphere and vice versa because of the tilt. It's about 23.5 degrees, this tilt. Now, there's also wood, which is a renewable resource, but it's not evenly distributed because the growth of trees depends on the amount of soil uh, uh, richness and the productivity of the area, which requires a certain amount of temperature, sunlight, precipitation. And so you don't get forests everywhere on Earth. There's plenty of places on the Earth that can only support grasslands. So they're not going to be able to have wood. Uh, water. So water seeps on the ground when, it, when, when uh, rain comes from the oceans and dumps into the continents and runs off, seeps on the ground. Certain places have the ability to allow more water to seep than others, depending on the local geology. Some places allow for the formation of underground chambers storing that water. Some places have rocks that have more porous than others. Some places have a uh, climate where you have more rain. And so because of all of that, the availability of ground and surface water changes depending on the earth. And that's a huge deal because uh, if you look at the earth, uh, the predictions that the places in red here, are going to be the places they're going to see the most shortage of water within the next decades or so. But some of those places are the places where most people are living, like uh, China and India. And so you're, you're looking at a dangerous uh, amount of water loss. Uh, and with the shift in climate change, that's going to uh, call it, make things even worse. Uh, so that's why uh, we're learning about that. Now, remember that geological and biological processes are unique to each area. Uh, across time and space, continental drift, different geological processes, all cause the different variety of materials to be available throughout the planet. And because mineral rocks and fossils vary, that means countries need to trade with each other, like I said, to be able to secure what they need uh, to survive and be well. Now, the United States has the, lu the, the luxury of being so big that we have a lot of deposits throughout the country, and so we can trade with among our own. And that's why we have a lot of uh, production that doesn't depend on others. But we still try to conserve our own resources as much as possible. So we still import resources from other places, uh, which are selling it cheap. So it's a big market economy uh, that we have now in the world because everybody wants to have the luxuries of the modern society. But not everybody has all the resources they need to do so. Right? And so... That's why uh, the uneven distribution matters. All right, guys. Uh, that is the lecture series for natural resources. There was a lot that we covered. Uh, and I'll see you uh, the next time. And until then, don't do anything that wouldn't make your mama proud.